Hello beautiful people, I'm Stephanie, thank you so much for tuning in. Today I am covering how to use tin whistle as an accompaniment instrument rather than a melody instrument. Now, just before we get started so you know what that means, usually a tin whistle is considered a melody instrument. That means it plays the main melody of any tune, and the main melody is usually what would be sung. It's the tune that you sing or hum along to in your head, it is the main essence of the song. And tin whistles are melody instruments, so they're designed to play that main melody of any particular tune. But if you happen to be playing with other people, you're playing in a band, or you're playing with somebody who's already playing the melody of that song, what can you do with your tin whistle to still join in and add to that overall piece of music without just playing the melody alongside somebody else? So I'm going to run through my top tips on how to use tin whistle as an accompaniment. Now it may seem obvious, but you can actually play the melody alongside somebody else who's already playing the melody. And this is something that's really popular to do in Irish traditional music. Um, everybody just plays the main melody of the song and it sounds incredible. But there are a few options when playing the main melody. You can actually choose a whistle that's lower or higher, and as long as you stick to the sort of an, an octaves difference, um, you can actually play the same tune an octave lower or higher than the person who is, for example, singing that main melody. So as an example, I have here a low F whistle. If I was to sing the melody at this low pitch, Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Now you can actually play that same melody on this whistle, but you could play it in the higher octave, and it would sound like this. Put the two together, and it sounds like this. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. You could also choose to use a higher whistle and play even higher again. Or if your singer is singing higher, you could play an octave lower. And that is a really easy way that if you already know the melody but somebody else is singing it or playing it, you can play along, but you're still making it sound a little bit different rather than playing exactly the same notes. Now the second option is that you can actually play a harmony, and you can play that harmony on every single note of the main melody. Now usually with a harmony you want to pick certain sections of the tune, so you might want to join in at the chorus rather than play throughout the whole thing, but you can still play that harmony on those same notes as the person who's singing. Now the most popular vocal harmonies are often on thirds and fifths, and if you don't know anything about music theory, don't worry, I'm going to simplify it. So let's say we're talking thirds. All that means on tin whistle is that a harmonizing note for, for example, D, which is all six fingers down, is actually the third note along, so all you need to do is lift two fingers. So a harmonizing note for D is F sharp, and they sound a little bit like this together. And if you want to go further and go for the fifth, it sounds like this. So as you can hear, those thirds and fifths sound pretty awesome, and a great way to add harmony to somebody else's melody is to play using thirds or fifths. Now as I said, thirds are more popular, so what you can do is you can learn to play the melody, or work out the notes for the melody of that tune, or if you already know them, even better, and then all you need to do is play everything two fingers further up. Now a perfect example of this is actually an 80s pop song called Sweet Dreams by Eurythmics, and I'm going to play a little bit for you now, and then I'll add the harmony. So this is the chorus part, just the regular melody. And the harmony is that third within this scale, so that means I start on two fingers up. So from the G, I get a B, and we start like this.
The only one thing you may have noticed is that I actually played a C natural rather than a C sharp. And that's just because it sounds a little bit nicer. So if you are using this very simplified hack on Tin Whistle, you may want to just consider that uh, it's probably better to play a C natural along with an A, but it all depends on the song and how you want your harmony to sound. And just to show you that this works on other keys of whistles as well, I'm going to play a nice scale up on my low F whistle, and I'll also play the harmony version. Now a third option you can also cover is repeats, or what I like to call an echo. And this is basically repeating each phrase of the main melody slightly after the person singing the melody has begun. So I'll give you a quick example with the tune Ghosts of Culloden, and I'll play a very simplified version so you get a feel for what I'm trying to show you. Now from that line of music you may be able to hear that this first line is split into four sections, and you can repeat each of those four sections kind of like a round, so when you sing a round in that sort of way. So it might sound like this. And if you were to do that with somebody singing, it would sound like this. Can you hear them? Can you see them? Marching proudly across the moor. So as you can hear, you can use your whistle as a repeat for any tune that does have a little gap and you can use it as a round, and that is a great way to accompany singers or main melody instrument players on a tin whistle. Another option is to use your tin whistle as a drone, or something that follows the chords of a tune. Now there are apps out there that will tell you the chords for every song that's on YouTube if you don't know how to work out chords, but other instruments playing within that band, within that tune, will usually be playing some sort of chord. You can also use the note on the beat to work out the chord that might be useful for that particular section of that song, and you can play a harmonising note or something an octave lower and hold that as a drone beneath the main melody. So that might sound something like this for Ghosts of Culloden. You can also actually do something similar along with the chords that are being played within that particular song. And if you don't know anything about chords, or you don't have somebody else within the band playing um, the chords for that particular tune, you can use an app called Chordify, which will tell you the chords to any song that's out there on YouTube, um, which is really, really useful. And you could actually break down that chord and play one of the three notes, four notes, but play one of the three main notes within that chord. And uh, that should actually give you a basis to use your whistle as accompaniment. Now the chords themselves usually follow the music in a progression. Um, often they're on the beat, so again using the same technique you might be playing essentially a harmony on the beat that is based around the chords within that particular melody. My final suggestion is potentially the most complicated of all the options you can do, but it might end up sounding the most exciting, and that is to use your instrument in gaps within the tune to fill in those gaps. Now if you're not familiar with this sort of thing, you can basically listen to any song out there, especially jazz and blues, um, swing music as well, and you'll often hear something like a saxophone or a clarinet or a piano even, 
um, adding little flourishes in between the breaks in the main melody. So as an example, um, I always think of the Jessica Rabbit song. Um, it's just got a few little gaps that you can fill in and it's often worth trying to find out the notes that are used within that particular tune and sticking to those notes. Um, also, you can, again, repeat sections of the tune of the main melody, but yeah, try and stick within that bluesy sort of key and use notes that already appear within the main melody. And then you can sort of improvise as you go along. You can also write these notes down for these little flourishes in between and do certainly listen to other versions of the tune that you're playing and try and find inspiration from flourishes within that music that other people have already added. So as a little example, I'll um, give you an idea of something perhaps you could add to that song, that Jessica Rabbit song. Now, if none of these whistle techniques are quite hitting the mark for what you want, you can always go a little bit crazy and actually use your whistle as a percussive instrument and use it to create the beat within your tune. And the best way to do that is to follow the chord progression of that tune and use the root note of each chord and actually play percussive sounds through your whistle. So as an idea, you could play something like this. So you can play around with a beat. It's essentially beatboxing into your whistle and following the chord progression of that tune, which is a very unusual way to use tin whistle, but it's definitely something you can do if you want to try out something different, unique, and create a very fresh sounding piece of music. Now, there are so many more ways that you can add accompaniment to a melody, but these are some simple, easy, and effective ways to get you started accompanying main melodies and using your whistle as more than just a melody instrument, actually using it to add to particular tunes and to help bring different dynamics to any tune that you want to play. I hope you found this helpful. If you do have any questions regarding any of these techniques, let me know in the comments down below and I will try my best to answer them. Um, also, if you have other suggestions on easy ways to accompany other music with Tin Whistle, then leave those below as well, because everybody is here to learn and we want all the information out there right here in one place. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget if you would also like to help my channel out in any way, if you find these videos useful and you'd like to support me, uh, you can do so on Coffee and Patreon. Coffee is optionally one-off or monthly. Patreon is a monthly subscription. And on both of these platforms, you can get a load of extras such as MP3 covers of all my tunes, PDF printable tabs, exclusive monthly tutorials and videos, um, backing tracks whenever I create them and so much more. You can also show your support right here on YouTube by using the super thanks button if it appears below this video, which fingers crossed, I hope it does. Otherwise, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell if you haven't. And of course, check out some other useful videos here. I'll put up some tin whistle techniques for you folks this week to hopefully expand your tin whistle knowledge. <laughs> Have a great week, guys. I'll see you again on Friday. But until then, happy whistling. Bye.